Hello everyone and welcome to Nickerit. My name is Cody and you are now on to part two of our Christmas holiday snowman amigurumi. So I'm going to assume that if you're on part two that you have already reached the main body and you've watched part one. I ended up doing a couple things differently. I did end up making the other sparkly version, not that you can tell on camera, but he is definitely very, very sparkly. It's not really showing up on camera at all, but his body is done with like the sparkle white version of that same exact yarn. And as you can see, I did the little top hat, which I have a tutorial for, for my pumpkin jack. It has its own little video down below. I'll link that down there and I did a bit more of a muted color. All of this is done with Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. I love this cotton, excuse me. And I really like how the top hat looks on him. I actually like it more than the earmuffs, but I've already done a video on how to do the top hat. So if you want to do the top hat instead, again, links are down below. I'm also going to add it to the PDF. So for anybody that has downloaded the PDF on Ravelry, I'll be pushing an update for that for a 2.0 version where I'll have a page where I go over the top hat in case you never got that PDF before for when I did that for Halloween. Again, a bit long-winded, but I wanted to kind of mention that I'm gonna be pushing an update for that to make sure by the time this video is up, I'm hoping to have that up. So, you know, be aware for that. And in today's video, we're gonna go over how to make the carrot nose, mitten hands, twig arms, and earmuffs in that order, by the way. And I'll have a little screenshotable images for this video that if you want to do that instead of getting the pdf down below again there'll be a coupon where you can get that for free so i'd highly recommend you go down there and get that you can learn how to do that i've already made the i cord scarf in a previous video again that will be linked down below but let's go ahead and start off with the nose i'm assuming you already know all the stuff that we are using in here from part one it's all the same stuff in today's video we're going to be using what I have left of this red because I think that'll be perfect amount for the earmuffs. I'm going to be using this orange and I'm going to be using this brown, all cotton, all worsted weight. And I'm also going to be using a darning needle and my ever trusty furls crochet hook. I love this thing. It's so pretty and I love the color of it. All right, so let's go ahead and move these two over here. We're going to put our little scarf on our little dude. My goal for this was to make them have inverted colors, so the scarves are the opposite and the earmuffs and the mittens are going to be red instead of green so that they kind of complement each other that way. But the noses are both going to be carrot orange, and I kind of like the subdued orange. Use whatever you have. I'm just using this really pretty tone here. So I'm going to move my camera so that it's a bit of a better angle. There we go. And we're going to post up a little thing for the carrot right here and I'm going to make my magic ring. All these are the same principles that I used for my base, so I'm assuming you already know that if you're here on part two. I'm going to create my slip knot, like so, and I'm going to chain two, one and two, and I'm going to go back into the very first chain. That is my magic ring, that's how I treat it, and that's what I'm gonna be doing for the entire video. So for the carrot, we're going to just put four single crochet inside of our very first chain. So three and four. It's a giant gaping hole. It's fine as long, there's polyfill everywhere. Eek. All right, it's fine. Just pull your tail and that will close right up. Now we're gonna turn our work and this was round one. So now we're going to go into round two where we go from four stitches up to six and that's going to be the only increasing round that we do for this little nose. We're going to go inside the front loop only for everything pretty much this entire way. I just really like how it looks and I'm going to single crochet one and then increase the next stitch. We're going to do that twice for this row. So it's going to be single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase basically that's going to get us from four stitches up to six and it's really tight because of how few stitches there are so just kind of keep your hands loose as you can but also be firm where you need to be i try to go through the front loop only so that's where there we go this is our last increase and i also find that the work wants to flip in on itself like so we're gonna kind of wiggle it so that the right side of the stitch is facing outward. 
We now have six stitches on our piece here. Just trying to wiggle it so that it's all outward. There we go. And we're going to single crochet six stitches, just single crocheting across those six stitches. So one, there we go, two, third stitch, try to keep it from flipping out on itself again, fourth stitch, there we go, fifth stitch, I have a hard time with carrot, this is actually one of my hardest pieces to do, and sixth stitch. And that, believe it or not, makes just the cutest little tiny nose that you can add right to the front of your face between the eyes. I'm going to just slip stitch off like so. Create a decently long tail, like good. E. Oh, hi. There we go. Eight inches just for sewing, and I'm going to pull that through. And then what I like to do before I do any kind of sewing is I like to go and take my tail underneath the stitch that I had just slip stitched under and just kind of pull it and make that look nice. I'm also going to take my original tail and cut it so that it's to the length of the bottom. So I'm just going to give it a little snip. It'll still kind of hang out inside the nose and it'll be fine there. So I'm going to take this and I just sew it onto the front of the nose. Super duper easy, just the way that I sew it for like all of my amigurumi. I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to line up right here. The way that I sew my pieces is I have five stitches between my eyes here and I'm gonna find pretty much the center of those five stitches and I'm going to go in in the bottom of the work like so. And I'm going to go up from the top into the back of the stitch like so all the way around until it is sewn on. I'm going to do that for all of my pieces for anything that I need to sew on and I'll be right back as soon as that's done. All right so we are all sewn on and now we are going to go work on our mitten. Basically I have just this little bit of yarn left and that's perfect amount for what we're about to do here. So I have one mitten done already and as you can see my mittens have a little bit of a thumb gusset and I'm really proud with how I figured out how to do this. It wastes way less yarn the way that I figured it out to do. So we're going to take our red yarn and I'm going to right angle just ever so slightly. There we go. So slip knot and we're going to chain two. And in our very first chain, we're going to put six single crochet. Two, three, four, five, and six. No, little buddy, six. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna pull our tail, make it so that it's all nice and tight there. I'm going to move that into the bowl and make a little bit of a clingy noise going on with it. Oh, there we go. And now we're going to turn our work, work in the round, and we're going to put an increase in every single one of those stitches. This is struggling. Pull that. There we go. I'm trying to get it through the entire stitch and it's struggling. There we go. So we're going to put an increase in every single one of these stitches. So one, two, second stitch, increase, third stitch, increase, fourth stitch, increase, fifth stitch, increase and sixth stitch increase and two so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we should have twelve so we're happy with that i'm going to take my tail i'm going to pull that through so that we can see where our rows begin and our rows end and for rows three and four we're going to just single crochet around all 12 of those stitches. So one, 
two. Let's fast forward through here. And that is our last stitch for row four. So now, as I've mounted my camera, I have to do that every single time. It's just good luck, you know. Um, we are going to go on row five, and we're going to decrease from 12 down to eight. And I know that's a little different, but the way that we do that, there's fluff everywhere. There's just everywhere. The way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, and then in the next two stitches, we're going to decrease. Repeat the entire way around. That will decrease four stitches across all of them. One and decrease. One. And it's going to get really tiny. So I'm just saying. Decrease. One. And decrease. I do not stuff my mittens. You can, but I find that with just putting my tails in there after everything is said and done, that I don't need to. And I still think that it looks pretty cute even without doing that. Because I imagine even with mittens, those twigs aren't going to be that meaty of uh, that they don't need that much stuffing. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. And how I get it to go flare out like that is we're going to now place an increase in every single one of those eight stitches. So we're going to put one increase here, increase, two stitches, go into the next one, and increase, the one after that, So that is that, and we're going to cut a nice long tail, and I'm going to pull that through, and I'm going to do my seamless fastening off technique, which again, I have a link for down below, but the essential point of it is we're trying to create a stitch, and the way that we do that is we're going to skip the first stitch from our needle right there, and we're going to go into the next one after that. That creates the loop, the side loop of our first part of our stitch right there and then we're going to go into the center of where we just finished off on our very last stitch and I try to go through the backs of the loops for a couple of them like so and now I'm just gonna however you pull your tail is gonna be how loose or tight that stitch looks so here is where the thumb gusset comes in it's kind of cutesy kind of nice I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to pull that out first and foremost. That tail is now out here. I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to crochet with it. And that's how I'm going to make that little thumb gusset. And that's what I mean by it saves yarn. So here, I'm going to go in where I want the bottom of my thumb. I'm going to put it in there. And we're going to pick up our original tail. We're going to pull that through like so. Now, what I like to do is I'm going to go through kind of on the side of our mitten here, wherever you want your little thumb. I want it right there. And we're going to take our tail and we're going to just do a little slip stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet one. Oh, but not splitting our yarn. There we go. And then single crochet two. And then I just pull like that. I'm going to take my tail. And I'm going to work it back into the center of our mitten. Like so. I'm going to kind of go behind. And pull it through. And that is how we do our little mitten. I'm going to take my tail. I don't need this much of a tail, honestly. And I don't need to stuff it in there. So we're going to take these tails, however, and stuff that into the center of our mitten. And now we're going to go work on our twigs. Twigs. There's two of them. There we go. And I'll show you how I turn those twigs into arms. 
and how I attach those to the mittens. Be right back. Okay, so the twig arms are actually very, very simple. We're essentially going to just chain seven and sing skip the first chain and then single crochet across the last ones. What I end up doing is taking my original tail and working it through all those stitches there. I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a moment. So here, we're gonna take brown worsted weight yarn. I'm just using cotton and I am going to make a decently long tail. I'm going to be using that for sewing purposes later. That's the reason why I do that. There is a method to my madness. All right, so we're going to create a slip knot and I'm going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to skip the first chain from our hook or the seventh chain essentially and we're going to go into the next one. What I like to do here is I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to kind of overlay it so that I'm working it as if it is a piece of my original foundation chain essentially. So now we're going to take my working yarn right here and I'm going to do a single crochet with my tail as if it is a piece of my foundation chain right there. So then two and do that all the way down. Three, four, five, and six. That's our last chain. And I'm going to slip stitch inside that chain as well, like so and also create a nice long tail for sewing. That is all I need. You need to have two little twig arms, obviously, unless you know you have other ideas and you're doing other things. You do you. So I'm gonna pull that, and then I'm also gonna take my other tail. It's kind of floppy up there. We're gonna pull it so that it is nice and hidden inside of our work, like so. That way you can't see it. So the reason why I have tails going off on both sides of my twig is for sewing purposes. We're going to take our twigs and we're going to just pick an end. It doesn't super duper matter. I'm going to take this end right here. And my goal with this is to kind of always pay attention to which way the thumbs are going. I know this is super like detail oriented of me, but I want my thumbs looking like how my thumbs would look and facing the same direction so my thumbs are touching that's what i did with this bad boy over here i made it so that i sewed on my twig arms into my mittens so that the outside of the chains would face outward and so that my thumbs were both going like they should be going you can do it however you want this is just how i did it so i'm gonna take my little twig here and I'm going to start by going through every other chain, basically, for our mitten back posts here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to put my first stitch through right there. And then I'm going to go back up and into my work, my twig right there. And kind of pull it and then I'm going to skip a chain and go into the next one there should be eight of them right there so we're gonna go back up and into the back of our twig and so if I skip one I only have to do this four times so take that and skip and then go back up into my work and then skip and then i just put my hook through my mitten not my hook but my darning needle there you go and then i kind of tug on it so that all the stitches are tight and that's how i do my little twig arms inside of my mitten and it's nice and hidden and then i'm going to take this and cut it because i don't need that tail anymore kind of wiggle it around so it's hidden inside. There we go. And we're going to take this little non-bamboo one. I do have the nice little plastic ones. 
and I like to attach it along the first increasing round from our body. So what I like to do is I just kind of stab it and figure out where I want it. So I want the thumbs facing forward on both of them, and I'm going to do the same thing with my other thumb there, but here I'm going to make sure that this side is facing this way. There we go, because I want this one to go along like that. So we're going to take this tail and sew it that way, basically. And here we are. So I'm going to take this and figure out what that lines up to on this side. And put that in on the inside. And I'm going to repeat. Be right back. Alright, so the arms are now attached and we are working on the last piece, which is which is the earmuffs. I actually really prefer the top hat to the earmuffs, but I want to give choices. I want to give people the option to do the earmuffs if they'd like. So I'm going to create two separate pieces. And this is the first piece, and I'm going to basically duplicate the exact same process. And what I end up doing is I'm going to create a slipknot again, the ever trusty slipknot, and we're going to put it on our hook and we're going to chain two, one, whoops, and two. We're going to work into our very first chain, just like before, and we're going to single crochet five. So one, two, why am I slipping everywhere? I think it's because of the lotion. Two, three, four, four, and four five we're gonna pull our tail so that it's nice and tight and we're going to then increase every single stitch so we're gonna go from five up to ten so one and increase second stitch increase third stitch increase fourth stitch increase and our last stitch for some reason was really really tight so let's wiggle around a little bit there we go and increase we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten stitches at the end of row two and here we're going to go from 10 up to 15 and the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one and then increase single crochet one and increase this is our last increase round so one and increase one second increase one third increase one and the fourth increase And one, the fifth increase. And we're going to pull our tail a little bit, take our first tail and pull it through as a stitch marker. And for rows four through five, we're just going to single crochet around for those 15 stitches, basically. And I'll be fast forwarding through this. that was our last stitch yeah that was okay so now we're going to want to attach these two ear muff pieces these are the two sides that go along either side of our little snowman and what we're going to do is we're going to create the center piece that connects them and I'm going to chain 12 so one two three four five six seven eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so here, what I like to do is we're going to, now that we've done our 12, I'm gonna put our hook into the very, the side of where we just slip stitched off. 
and I'm going to do that, do a little kind of single crochet to connect the two pieces, kind of pull on her tail a little bit, and I like to then go into the side behind where I just went, and I'm going to slip into that to kind of turn my work and so that it's all facing upward still. And then I'm going to start single crocheting down my chains, basically. So there are 12 chains, so I'm going to do 12 single crochet, one in each chain going down. Do some trickiness to try to get that to all face the right way. So we're going to go down all of these chains. And now we're on our last couple of pieces here. I've got polyfill everywhere and it's driving me crazy. I need to do a nice good desk cleaning. Um, we're on our last chain here and now, oops, let's get that fixed. There we go. Last chain. Let's pull on our tail a little bit there. All right. So now I want to try to connect this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the very first one here that is right there. And I'm going to go and do a little slip stitch like so there you go just slip stitching off and i leave a nice nice long tail for sewing so i have two tails here that i actually use to sew you can either a create two of the same length and sew with both your tails just to kind of hide them or you can make an obscenely long tail and use that for sewing so i just like to make a nice long tail and I'll sew along with both of those basically. So what I do here is I'm going to use both of these tails for sewing. I'm going to sew along until I get to this tail and then I'm going to take this tail and sew along where that tail is basically. And we're going to take a little bit of fluff, just the ever slightest little bit. Bounce the camera for good luck. And we're going to just put that on the insides of our little earmuff there. I need to find out where my actual bamboo marking pins went because this is driving me insane. I do not need that much polyfill when it comes to these little earmuffs. I'm actually pretty happy with that amount. I'm going to take some of it off of this one because it feels like I'm overstuffing. There we go. And then I'm going to sew that on. I'm going to find my marking pins. Aha! I found my bamboo marking pins. There we go. So I'm going to take these and put them along the top of the head where I like them. I'm going to keep that like that. There we go. Just trying to keep all our tails straight. And I want them along the sides of the head. I want along the eye, if I can help it. And I'm going to take my marking pin and stab it through the center, kind of just wiggle it into the side, keep it so that it's firm there, and make it match on the other side. If I need to pull it so that it's a little bit taut, that is fine as well. I also try to run this line across the first base right there. So we're going to take our marking pin. Again, I have links for this down below. They are affiliate links too. I had a bunch of people tell me that I should put the marking pins as an Amazon affiliate and I was like, that's actually a really good idea. So I did that and they're down below if you're interested in the marking pins and you want to help out the channel. Just throwing that out there. All right, so I'm going to go sew this on and then that's pretty much it. Be right back. So once you have sewn on your little earmuffs, that is pretty much all there is to this pattern. Uh, thank you for joining me on part two if you've made it this far. Far. I appreciate it a lot. Be sure to get the PDF again. Um, if you're interested in helping support the channel, we have a Patreon, we have PayPal links, we have affiliate links, we have everything like that down below. Don't feel pressured though. We also have a Discord and it's a lot of fun over there. So if you're interested in that, again, links for everything will be down below. I'm hoping to do a couple more Among Us hats, also a Santa hat and a gnome. So stay tuned. I'm trying to upload a bunch more. So, you know, there's that, and until next time, guys, bye!